Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. In honor of back to school, I wanted to share with you guys a story time of when I was in school. And I teased this on my Instagram. This is the second story that we're gonna be talking about, as you guys can tell from the title, um, my crazy roommate that we had to kick out within two weeks. I do wanna preface by saying this story may be triggering to some people, as it does loosely allude to domestic violence so if that is something that you are not comfortable hearing about or you are triggered by i feel no ways if you click off of this video i completely understand now it has been about five or six years since this actually happened and the only reason why i'm actually sharing this is because i do feel like a lot of people can get some type of lesson from it i learned a lesson from it and i, I don't know i may even take it down of course if this is your first time seeing my face my name is Lakeisha. I typically post a lot of beauty, lifestyle, makeup, and hair related videos. If that is something that you are interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. Without further ado, let's get started. This story takes place in August of 2016. I was going into my fourth year of university and at the time I lived with my best friend from high school, which if you guys watched the previous video, we call her Jade. Um, she moved in with me. Uh, this time I lived in a three bedroom home that I rented from my mom and so it was me, Jade, and we were looking for a third roommate. And I remember that I had this friend who I met in second year and we're going to call him Ali. Now Ali is a really, really, really nice guy. Like he's really tall. He's like six foot, six foot one or six foot two or something like that. He's a big guy. Um, he's like a teddy bear. Like we clicked so well. We were in women's and gender studies together and he was such a really nice guy. I was talking to him in the summer and I was like, you know, we're kind of looking for another roommate just to make sure that we have three people for the three bedroom home. And he's like, oh, you know, where he's at, he wants to move out because the guys there, they're moving, they're graduating. And he's like, I'm going to be there by myself. So I was like, you know what? Come and live with us. <laughs> right? So when he moved in, his parents moved him up here. And his mom is like the sweetest lady. His father and his mom took us out to this Lebanese restaurant. And we ate beautiful food. I'm such a foodie. So I loved loved the food and there was like Lebanese belly dancers and they were dancing Jade and I got up and danced with them like it was really really a fun time so it was the long weekend that he moved into the home so we all decided that we were going to go on a road trip to Gatineau Gatineau is like on the border of Ottawa and Quebec and they have this really beautiful national park there if you guys listened to my previous story I did end up getting a new car so at this time I had a sedan we all decided to go in my car and I was of course driving, which I really don't know why I was driving because everybody knows that I suck at directions. I am prone to getting lost without a GPS. GPS is my best friend. At the time, we were poor students. I did not have data on my phone, so no, I did not have a GPS on my phone. I was using a car GPS, and not the built-in GPS. I mean the actual GPS that you have to plug into your computer and let it update. So I had not updated it since 2013. There was a lot of construction around Gatineau, so there's a lot of roads that the device just didn't know. I'm the only person who speaks French right so I am we're stopping here we're stopping there gas stations houses and we're asking people for directions because my device does not know any directions so we finally make it there and we park into this parking lot near the um, National Park and we look at the map and we look at like where's the nearest one to us so there was this one called the Pink Lake and that was a trail that um, it was only three kilometers away from us we're like you know what let's take that trail let's go as we're walking you know we're taking in the scenery I love being outside in nature I love summer I'm born under the moon but I love the Sun I love me some warm weather we see the sign to the Pink Lake and it tells us that the Pink Lake is now 11 kilometers away from us we're like okay I thought it was three kilometers now it's 11 kilometers. Okay, so maybe the kilometers was in terms of driving, so walking it's 11. So we're like, you know what, that's fine. It's not that far. Let's go ahead and walk. Ali then tells us that he wants to jog ahead because he actually wants to get like a workout. We're like, you know what, do your thing. You're a grown man. Me and Jade are enjoying our little walk. We call her mom. We FaceTime her parents. Like we're just having a, such a good time. Half an hour later, I get a call from Ali and Ali tells me that he's on trail number 25. Now the trail to the Pink Lake is trail number 15. It's not that complicated. Just follow the, the directions and you'll get there. But he ended up on trail number 25. So I'm just like, Ali, okay, just go backwards and get back to trail number 15. We'll meet you there. So 10 minutes later, we get another call from Allie and Allie says that he's on trail number five and he ran into a small bear. If you meet a cub 
little baby bear, there's bound to be a mother. So just back up slowly and get out of the area. You know, go back to the trail that you were on before and we will meet you there. Everybody knows that when you're lost, you stay put. You don't walk around and wander. You stay where you are. So me and Jade at this point, we're starting to get really upset because this boy does not listen to instructions. So he messaged me again and at this point I tell him, listen, if you're lost, that's fine. Just ping my vehicle because there's a GPS on it. Go back to the vehicle and we will meet you there. At this point, the pink lake is like three actual walking distance, three actual kilometers away from us. We're like, let's just go to the lake and then we'll turn around and go back. At this point, it's maybe like four o'clock. It's been like two hours, two or three hours since we've been walking. And we're just around where the pink lake is, me and Jade. And we start getting bitten by mosquitoes because it's getting cooler in the evening and we're by a body of water. So we start getting eat eaten alive to the point where like we're walking with our hands like this against our eyes because there's just so many bugs. And so we decide, you know what, it's not worth it. Let's just turn back. Let's go back to the vehicle and we'll all just go home or something. About a half an hour later, I get a call from Allie. Not from Ellie's phone number, but from a random person's phone number. Because apparently he got so lost that he ended up at a military base. How did he get there? I have no idea. So Jade and I get back to my car and we plug in the address that he gave us to this military base. This military base is like a five kilometer drive away from the actual park. But he gets in the car, and he's laughing laughing, hackling, and we're just like, oh my god, how are you having so much fun where we are starving, we are tired of walking, and we just want to go home. Like, we're done. We're done with the day. It's a fail. So the entire week, we were just like getting on him for being lost, you know, teasing him or whatever, the entire week, right? So when the next weekend came around, his girlfriend came up from, I believe, Toronto. I don't know exactly where she's from. Let's call her... Let's call her Kate. So Kate comes up and she stays with Allie in his room. And she's a really sweet girl. Like I am five foot three. She's maybe like mm, four foot nine, maybe five feet. Very petite, very small. Really quickly, us three girls like really bonded and stuff. And, and it, she was a really nice person. And we decided by the time the weekend came around that we were gonna try again to make it to the Pink Lake. So this time we were in bikini tops and like cover-ups and stuff. We had flip-flops on. We had our sunglasses to make sure that the bugs didn't get in our eyes. We had our sunscreen on and everything. Me, Jade, and Kate were in my vehicle. And then Allie decided to, um, have his guy friends come with us too. So there was maybe about four of them and three of us and the, the boys were in his car. Once again, I am driving, still don't know why since I'm the worst at directions and none of them are good co-pilots. We get lost again. About an hour and a half later, we finally make it to the national park. And this time we ended up parking a lot closer to the Pink Lake. So we're not 15 kilometers away from the lake. And where we were, there was like two parking lots, one at the lower level and one at the higher level. We had been calling the boys, but they wouldn't answer the phone. So we decided to park up on the hill. And then they finally answered the phone and told us that they were down at the bottom. Now it was a long weekend, so I assumed that we wouldn't find parking if we went down. So we just stayed where we were and walked down the hill to where the guys were. The whole time we're just like, we can't tell the boys that we got lost. Like we've been giving this boy so much flack all week about him getting lost. So if we were now to tell him that we were get that we got lost, like he's gonna flip out on us, right? So we're just like, you know what, we'll just tell him that we've been there, like talking amongst ourselves as girls for like a half an hour or whatever, waiting for them to get here. So we get down the hill, we get to the boys, and they're like, where have you guys been? We're like, yeah, 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 we were here for like half an hour. We were talking as girls, just, you know, having girl time, whatever. Allie flipped out. I did not expect him to flip out the way he did. He looked at Kate and he was like, what do you mean you guys were here for half an hour? I've been waiting for you. You know, the whole reason why you're here is to spend time with me. What do you mean that you're with other people spending time and, you know, didn't even think to call us and all this kind of stuff? And he just started to get really upset. I'm just like, whoa, like what happened there? Like that should have been a flag number one, but I didn't really think much of it. So Kate comes to me, she pulls me aside. She's like, can we just tell him the truth? Cause like, I don't want him to be mad at me or anything like that. I'm like, you know what, fine girl, it's, it's, it's not even that big of a deal. So he's fine. Then we started walking towards the lake. We realized that this pink lake is not actually a beach. No, you can't actually go into the water. It is a national park. Therefore, you can't step in the water. You just look at it. So we were in our bathing suits. 
getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. So we decided to walk and keep walking around this pink lake to get in the scenery. I got a really nice photo of the scenery there, so you know, it's not all lost, not all wasted. You know, as we're walking, the guys decided that they wanted to start a bonfire. Catch my drift? We don't like bonfires as girls, but they wanted to do bonfire. So we just kind of walked ahead slowly so that, you know, we were still within the same vicinity and they could catch up with us. So about well, a little bit later, they finally caught up with us. And we had been walking for about an hour or so on the trail. It was really beautiful, but we definitely were not dressed for it. We were just getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. So we're like, you know what? This was great, but let's get out of here. We get back to where the cars are parked. And of course, as you guys know, we are parked up on the hill. They're parked here on the landing. So we're like, you know what, guys, can you just drop us off at my car so that we can, you know, we don't have to walk up the hill. Allie looks at me and he's like, you guys can walk yourself. I'm like, excuse me? I'm like, you know what? Fine. I can walk by myself. I'm an independent woman and I can do that myself. Thank you very much. So we start walking and he's like, no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Like, we'll just get in the car. We'll, we'll drop you off. I'm like, no, Ellie, you said what you said. I'm going to walk myself. That should have been flag number two, but I did not take it as flag number two. I'm like, you know what, Ellie, that's fine. We're just going to walk up the hill. So us girls started walking. The guys got in the car and they pulled up beside us. They're like, you know what, just get in the car. Get in. I'm like, Ellie, you had a chance before. You've been salty all day. We're just gonna walk and do our own thing. So Kate looks over to her boyfriend and she's like, Allie, you know, what are you, what are you gonna do when you get home? He's like, I'm just gonna hang out with the boys and have boy time and do bonfire. And as we're driving home, we're like, okay, well, what do you girls wanna do? Like, we don't wanna waste the whole day. The weekend before school starts, we wanna do something. So there is also a lake by my university. And I'm like, you know what, let's just go there. Let's grab some food at McDonald's. Let's sit down by the park and just, you know, have our own fun at home. 45 minutes later, we get back to Ottawa and we're nearing my school. I get a call from Allie and Allie's like, where's Kate? I'm like, well, we're all in the car. You know, we're going to the lake by our university because Allie and I go to the same school. And he's like, what do you mean you guys are going to the lake? How dare you, talking to Kate right now, how dare you go out with the girls and, and not spend time with me? She's like, you know what? You told me that you were going with your friends, so I'm not just gonna sit home and twiddle my thumbs. I'm gonna do something. He's like, you know what? I am so mad right now. I can't even look at you. When I get home, you better not be there. So I'm just like, okay, well, well, damn. Oh, okay then. So that should have been flag number three. So I'm just like, you know what, Kate, do you have anywhere else to go at this point? She's like, yeah, I have a cousin who lives here in Ottawa. I'm like, you know what, we're going to go home instead, pack your stuff, and, you know, I'll drop you off at your cousin's house. So us girls, we go home, and she starts packing her stuff and everything. Ten minutes later, we hear the door open. Allie's home. And we're just like, oh, what are we going to do? Because he said he wanted her to be out of the house by the time he got here. So she starts running frantically, dashes into my room and hides behind my bed. And I'm like, what are you hiding for? She's like, I don't want him to see me. You know, he said he, he didn't want me here and everything like that. I'm just like, you know what? Just like, just wait for a moment. We'll, we'll get you out of the house. And, and I'm just like, why are you hiding from him? First of all, but I didn't think much of it at the time. So he comes upstairs. He's like, where's Kate? Where is Kate? Jade is in her room and he goes to Jade and he's like, "Where Jade, where's Kate? And Jade, she's like, I don't want to lie to him. So she's just like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know where she is. He goes in his room and he slams the door. Kate looks at me and she's like, I forgot my hair dryer. I'm just like, girl, it's a hair dryer. I will get you your hair dryer tomorrow once I drop you off at your cousin's house. She's like, no, you know, I'll just go get it and whatever. I'm like, okay, well, you do you. So Kate goes into his room. Jade comes in my room now. We're listening to the conversation that's going on in Allie's room. And we hear like yelling, we hear arguing. All of a sudden we start hearing like, hitting something like either you're hitting the wall or just like you know when you're like stomping on the ground because you're fighting we start hearing them fighting right and all of a sudden I hear Allie let go of my arm you are going to break my arm and Allie goes I can break your arm if I want to I'm like what what's going on there 
At this moment, I started going into shock because I was like, I know this guy. This guy is somebody that I have known for two and a half years. Like he has never acted like this, like this entire day. He's been just so weird and completely unlike the alley that I know. He has flipped like so like into this person that I just don't recognize. And I was starting to go into shock at this moment. And I'm just like, I hope nothing's going on. I really hope that this is not what I think it is. Ali storms out of the bedroom. He goes down the stairs and they're in like the living room. Kate goes downstairs as well because he has her purse with all of her identification and everything in it. And she's like, you know, give me back my purse and give me back my stuff. And he takes her actual luggage from her because she had her, her stuff packed in a bag. He takes it from her, he unzips it and he throws it out all over the floor. The entire living room is just covered in her belongings. She sits down on the couch and he's towering over this tiny little girl. She honestly looks so small on the couch there. He's just getting in her face. I don't even remember what he was saying, but he was just like yelling at her the entire time. She starts to get up from the couch and he pushes her back down. He then takes both of her arms in one of his hands and he holds her up like this above the couch. And she's literally just like being suspended in the air by her hump her hands like like this and he's like holding her then he flings her back on the couch I came downstairs because I was just like okay I want to make sure nothing's going on I want to make sure there are other people in the room like my body was just moving without actually knowing what I was doing I started just picking up her stuff off the floor just absent-mindedly and like putting them back into the bag not really understanding what was going on around me like i said i was in shock when i was young i went through a similar experience where i was exposed to domestic violence on a certain level so i was just experiencing all of that again i just I, it was an out-of-body experience to be honest I, I just really don't even remember i wish i didn't remember that day eventually he went back up the stairs. I got all of her stuff in the bag. He took her purse, so all of her identification, her money, everything, her keys, everything he had. I'm like, listen, Kate, let's just get you out of here and I will bring you your stuff tomorrow. I wanna diffuse the situation. This doesn't need to continue any further. We go into the kitchen because there is a door to go down to the basement. That's where my car is under the house. And we get in the car, we start backing out of the driveway. And all I hear is like two haunt, two hands, I keep saying haunts, and all I hear is like two hands just press on my vehicle. I turn behind me, Allie's behind my car, preventing me from actually getting out of the driveway. I'm like, Allie, move. I'm just getting Kate out of here so we can diffuse the situation. It's getting a little too heated. Let's just calm down and think about, you know, things tomorrow. And he starts crying hysterically outside of the car. I'm like, Allie, move. If you do not move, I will run you over. She, Kate looks at me. She's like, no, you know, if he will actually stay there. He is crazy like that. He will actually stay behind the vehicle. He will let you run him over. I'm like, what do you mean he's crazy like that? Do you know that he does this all the time? My car has this beautiful safety feature that unlocks all of the car doors once you put it in park. So now the car is unlocked and he opens the door and he's sitting on the ground outside the door of the back seat where Kate is, and he's like crying into his hands. He's like, I'm sorry, can we talk, da 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 da. He starts saying that like, oh, it's all Jade's fault, and Jade's the reason why they're having this fight, and Jade's getting, you know, in their relationship. Jade turns around, she's like, what do you mean I'm the reason for your problems? Like, don't drag me into your issues, you've been snapping all day. He turns around and starts yelling at Jade, and at this moment, I just started feeling so bad, because I'm like, Jade, my best friend from high school, who I brought to live with me in this city does not know him. Like you can yell at me all you want, but don't yell at my friends. Don't yell at people that you don't know. Like that's like my family. She was my sister. She was my best friend. You don't yell at my best friend. Once again, I was in shock, so I didn't say any of that. Kate decides that she's gonna go and talk with him. She's like, I'll be right back. Like we're just gonna have a conversation. I'm like, okay, well, we'll be here if you, if you need it. My neighbor comes outside. My neighbor is like this, 30 something year old white lady with her seven year old son hearing all of this going on. Yeah. So she comes outside, she's like, Lakeisha, are you okay? Like, 
I'm, I'm hearing a lot of noises and a lot of yelling like if you need my help like you have my number if you need me to call the police and you're not comfortable calling the police like just let me know I'm like thank you so much like I have your number I will definitely send you a text message if I if I need that so uh, Jade and I are sitting in the car and we're just like what is happening right now like I don't understand what's going on we decide to call my mom so I tell my mom what's going on she's like five hours away like what exactly is she gonna do but I call my mom she's like if anything escalates further, call the police. Jade and I, still in the car, we reverse and park parallel to the house. So when Kate comes back, she can just get in the car and we can drive her to her cousin's house. It starts getting late because we came back from the Pink Lake maybe around six or so. It's like eight, seven or eight now. So the sun is like gone down. It is pitch black outside. And I'm just like, Jade, do you see them? Do you hear them? We're both in the car like, where where did they go? Like, what happened to them? I, I have no idea. So then I start really getting scared. I've been so reactive instead of proactive. So I'm just like, you know what? If they don't come back in the next five minutes, I'm calling 911. Five minutes pass and I see out of the corner of my eye, Allie walking towards me just out of the darkness. So I'm waiting and I'm looking, but I only see him and Kate is nowhere to be seen. So I immediately dial 911 and I'm on the phone and I'm talking to the dispatcher. Allie comes up beside me, starts knocking on my window. He's like, oh, Keisha, can we talk? I'm sorry, like, can we have a conversation? I didn't even look at him. I just put my hand up and I just started saying, you know, my dress and everything. I'm talking to the dispatcher. I guess he clues in that I'm on the phone with 911 and he runs over to his car. He gets in and he drives off. And out of the corner of my eye, I finally see Kate and she looks fine. She comes back to the car, but the cop showed up really quickly after that. And we told him what happened. His mom calls and she's frantic. She's like, I heard what happened. Like, that's not my son. My son wouldn't do that. She's like, this type of behavior, like he would never do. I don't know what you guys are talking about. He is the sweetest boy. I'm like, girl, listen, you do not know your son, obviously. And so I'm just like, listen, we're, we're with the police. So I'm going to be hanging up the phone now. And, you know, we'll call you tomorrow or whatever the case may be. My mom calls me. We're talking with the police and her, she's the landlord of the house. And basically the, the police tell us that we can't kick him out, obviously, because of renter laws. Like there's nothing that she can do to kick him out of the house. So the police, you know, asks us or asks, Kate, if this is the first time this has happened. And she tells the police that no, this isn't the first time that he's lashed out at her like this. And this happens, it's a regular occurrence. So I look at Kate and I'm just like, listen, Kate, I don't know you very well, but I can't just sit here and be silent. You don't deserve that type of treatment. And I will say this to anybody. I don't care if I've known you for five minutes or five years. I do not condone that type of behavior towards anybody, man or woman. I do not condone that at all. So I looked at her, I'm like, listen, I understand that this is someone that you've been dating for how many X plus years, and you have really strong feelings for him, but you deserve better than this. You are a strong, intelligent woman. You are going to school, making something of yourself. You do not need that type of stress and this type of terrible behavior around you. I said, listen, if you don't feel comfortable getting help yourself, ask me. I don't really know you, but I will be that person if you need me to be. That's just the type of person I am. And in that moment, I vowed that if I ever came across a similar situation like that, I would always say something. Now, to be clear, I never saw anything other than the altercation that happened downstairs. That's the only thing I ever saw, but I heard, I know what I heard and I heard fighting and I heard her say, let go. You are going to break my arm. I heard him say, I can break your arm if I want to. I heard that, okay? But I didn't see anything. So the cops said that because we didn't see anything, there wasn't really anything that they could do. And in that moment, I just felt so helpless. And I'm like, sir, are you serious? Like, what do you mean there's nothing that you can do? All three of us girls are literally the exact same size, very tiny, very petite. And here's a six foot pro kickboxer who's probably on bonfire and who knows what who's upset with Jade, because Jade apparently got in the middle of his relationship, upset with me because I called 911, and upset with Kate because he was upset with her the entire day, pretty much. So you mean to tell me that he can come back here and who knows what is gonna happen because he's on some type of medication. So then he, he asks us if he is armed and if he is on any medication. 
I say, the only thing I know is that he did bonfire. I don't know if he has any weapons with him. So they're like, okay, um, Kate cannot come back to the premises. Kate tells them that she has her cousin. They're like, okay, we're gonna take you to your cousin's house. And I told them that, you know, I'll take her stuff back tomorrow because she still has, you know, her purse and stuff that Allie took. And I'm like, I'll just drop that off tomorrow and, you know, just go with the police officers, go tonight. The officers make it very clear that she's not allowed back on the premises. So he asks us where Ali may have gone. We're like, I don't know where he would have gone. And so they're like, okay, they're gonna look for him. And Jade and I go back into the house and we lock the door, obviously. About maybe half an hour later, we hear some knocking on the door. It's Ali. Ali's outside and he's crying, hysterical. He's like, I'm so sorry, guys. You know, I left my key. Can you let me in? At this point, I'm just like, hell no, I'm not letting you in this house. I don't know what you're going to do to me at this point. I don't know who you is anymore. You are not coming back into this house. So Jade and I were just as silent as we could possibly be just listening to him. He's like, guys, I'm okay. Well, at least can you guys give me my medicine? And I'm here like, he has medicine? Oh my God. Like, he has medicine. Jade, we have to give him his medicine. Jade looks at me like I'm an idiot and she's like, he's not talking about medicine. He's talking about bonfire. Eventually he leaves because he understands that we're not gonna open the door. And Jade and I call the police. So the police come back to the house and we tell them what happened and they're like, listen, he legally lives here. You cannot lock him out. We're like, we didn't lock him out. He forgot his key. That's not my problem. But basically um, we weren't, we legally were not allowed to lock the door and keep him out of the house. So I looked at him in the eyes and I'm just like, officer, I do not believe you understand the severity of the situation right now. Are you gonna wait until you find two dead bodies in a ditch somewhere before you actually do something about what's going on? You told us that you went to look for him. That's why we called you. He looks at me and I could see it in his eyes, like he was just so helpless and really, just really sorry. Like there was just so much like, ugh, to pain in his eyes as well. Cause I feel like he wanted to do something, but legally like there wasn't anything that he can do because we didn't see anything because we only heard something. And he's like, if he comes back, you know, just let him inside. And I'm just like, well, I'm not gonna sleep tonight <laughs> because I have no idea what this guy is capable of. I thought I knew him, but obviously I don't. And I'm gonna have to sleep all night with this guy in the house who's probably pissed at me and pissed at Jade as well. So Jade and I, we went in my room because my mom actually had installed a lock and key into my bedroom. And I honestly was thanking God that she did. So we left the door unlocked. We went in my room, both Jade and I, and we locked the door. And he eventually came back and we were like holding our breath the entire night. It was such a weird, airy feeling that night and we felt so scared and really uncomfortable. I don't know when it was, but I guess I finally fell asleep because when I woke up the next morning, guess who was in the house? Kate was in the house. Even after the police escorted her off the premises and ordered her not to return she was back at the house. So I called my mom and I'm just like, she's back here and everything. My mom was really upset. She called his mom and she was like, listen, he can't stay here anymore. I can't evict him, but I will give you back first and last and give you a week to find another place to be because you can't stay here any longer. And so the next week was really, really awkward, just eggshells. I was still in kind of shock I remember him getting upset with me because the police had said something to him. I believe they called him and had some type of conversation and he was literally just yelling because apparently I told the police that he was an abuser and that he was all of these other things. So that morning, I finally said something. I had not said anything to him for the past three days since this has occurred. And I stood atop the stairs and I'm just like, listen, Allie, you have been talking and running your mouth for the past two days. Now you're going to listen to me. And I basically went off on him. I'm just like, I've never told the police anything that just came out of your mouth because I wouldn't say that. And yes, I believed, I thought I knew you, but the alley that I thought I knew and the alley I saw last weekend are two completely different people. I'm like, listen, at this point, you and I are not friends, okay? 
I, res I don't respect you at all. For you to be able to do that is just completely disgusting. You don't yell at my friends like that. You can yell at me and do whatever you want, I don't care. But don't yell at my best friend like that. T a 10 minute rant. And um, that was the first time I said something at all in like three days. Honestly, I have no issue with Kate. The police told her that she could not be on the premises, so I had issue with that. All three of us girls were kind of just, you know, still talking and, and being cordial with each other. My issue is not with her, my issue was with Allie. I don't know why this stuck out to me so much, but I have square plates, square little ones and square big ones because everyone else has round plates and I want to be different. So um, that weekend, I think Kate cooked for us and you know, we were all eating on those square plates. The day before school, they were doing bonfire in the kitchen outside um, by like the backyard door. So they were sitting on the doorstep with their bonfire. Jade started telling me that she was getting a headache from the fumes, from the, the scent of the bonfire. Or just like, okay, well, we can't, so we're not gonna get any sleep if we stay here. So we decided to just sneak out of the house and we're like calling all of our friends, trying to see who's awake right now. It's like two o'clock in the morning. And one of our friends picked up, she lived in Gatineau. So we made this long trip to Gatineau at 2 a.m. to get to her house to sleep the night before school because we could not sleep in that house. We honestly like had not slept for more than like five hours in three days and we were just so scared and traumatized. It just was not a good place to be in. So we get to our friend's house. Let's call her Selena. We get to Selena's house in um, Gatineau and we're telling her what happened. It's like 2 a.m. We're exhausted. All of a sudden, Selena says, my stomach hurts. We're like, what's wrong with you? She's like, she's sweating. She's like, I just can't. Like, something is wrong. So then we drive Selena to the hospital. Turns out she has kidney stones. And we spent the night before school in the hospital with Selena for her kidney stones. So once again, hadn't slept in like four days at this point. Thank God Celine was okay. You know, she had her little surgery and everything and she's she's fine. We went to school, we were exhausted. We decided to just kind of take it really easy the next couple of days. So Jade and I get back to the house. Like the house is a mess. It smells like bonfire. We're just like, listen, there's a few more days and then Allie will be gone and we can clean up the house. The weekend will be almost here and we, we will be fine. So we decided like we didn't wash any dishes. We just kept putting everything in the dishwasher. We're like, we'll worry about that on the weekend. I started looking around for my, my, my dishes because we ate on them like just a couple days ago and I hadn't seen them since. And I was like, you know what? They're probably in the dishwasher. Like I didn't really think much of it. We're like, when we unload it, you know, it'll be fine. So the next day, the day after school, I believe, um, Allie comes downstairs and I am sitting at the dinner table doing, I don't know, maybe homework or something, something on the computer. And he comes and he sits down and he's like, can I speak with you? I'm like, yeah, you can speak with me. That's fine. And he tells me he's sorry and he apologizes for how he acted and everything like that. I listened to him. I listened to what he had to say. And I say, thank you for your apology. You know, it's, um, it's, it's nice that you were able to see what had happened and see things from our perspective and understand how frightened we were by the way that you acted. And I said, although you're apologizing to me and I accept your apology, I just feel like we should not be friends anymore because I cannot put that image of you out of my head and I, I just don't want to be around someone that can act like that to a woman and understanding that once again this is not the first time that that happened I just don't feel like I could ever be friends with you again. My trust is something I give to people until you sh give me a reason not to and he gave me a reason not to and then from that point I just would not be able to see him in a different light at all so I was just like listen listen, let's just be cordial for the next couple of days. And then we're just gonna cut our ties and go our separate ways. By the end of the week, he moved out and he went, I don't know where he went. Kate was gone as well. I don't know what happened to her. When it was finally the weekend, Jade and I decided to finally clean the house <laughs> and do the dishes. So we're unpacking the dishwasher and I'm just like, Jade, where's my plates? She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, we just emptied the entire dishwasher and my square plates aren't there. So I'm just like, did they actually just take my plates? To this day, I have no idea where they are. You know, now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, I'm still really upset about those dishes because I went to four value villages to pick up 
those dishes, to find ones that I like. Like these aren't just at Walmart that I can go and pick up new ones. I actually search for those specific type of dishes. To this day, I still, I believe they took my dishes, which sucks because I have the other half of the set without the large plates. Listen, like I said, I don't know what actually happened in that room because I wasn't in the room. And a part of me is like, I should have been in the room. I should have went to Ali's room and stood outside the door to make sure that nothing happened. But I was in such shock that I, I could not do anything more. And I, I can't blame myself for that because I could only do what I could in the moment. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. I wish I did more, but you know, I can't sit down and, and shit it woulda coulda, right? But I know that if something like that ever happened again, I would pick up on the signs. There were so many signs that he was just starting to flip the entire day that I could have picked up on that I didn't. I think I did the best that I could at 19. No, my birthday had just passed, so I was 20. My birthday was in June, so I was 20 years old at the time. But yeah, I did what I could with what I could do. I don't know if they're still together. I remember maybe three years later, he messaged me on Instagram and he was hitting on me, basically. So I assume they broke up, but I definitely did not give him the time of day. I did not even respond because I was so disgusted with the way that he acted. You would never, ever be my friend again. That was my story. I really hope that you guys can learn something from this and just understand that you just need to follow your intuition, go with your gut. If something feels weird, if something feels wrong, it typically is, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. You really don't know people and it's unfortunate. You know, I'm literally always having conversations with people in my DMs about things that they've, they're have they struggling with and everything. So if you do want to talk to somebody, I am here to listen. Sometimes that's all you need, someone to listen, someone to bounce ideas off of. I'm here, you know, I, I will be that person because when I was going through my own-ish, I wanted someone to be there and I was so bottled up with my emotions that I could not, I physically could not ask someone for help. I was incapable of asking for help. So I try to be that for other people. Hopefully this wasn't too triggering and you guys made it to the end. As always, click over here to see some of my previous videos and remember to stay gorgeous, stay fabulous because I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video.